get to record something? That gets my goat. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And this is That Gets My Goat. Yes, uh, we're back with another awesome episode of That Gets My Goat. Today, we don't really have a goat to get at, but uh, something unusual is going on in the world of nerddom. And maybe it's not unusual anymore. But anyways, we were going to talk about the, the new show that has hit television. Just started up, what, like eight days ago, something like that? Ten days ago now? Well, not for them, but yes. <laughs> right, yeah, by the time this gets out, three, four weeks ago. But yeah, the, uh, the show is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is what it's called, right? That's right. I simply call it S.H.I.E.L.D. and I... I I don't know why. Oh, but I think for a long time, the show was going to be called S.H.I.E.L.D. And then when it was made, somebody made the de- the decision to change the title to Agents of. But but for me, it's always S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't know why. Well, it's a good shorthand anyways. I, I, I think people will understand the Agents of is not the uh, important part of the uh, sh- the show name, I would think. It's kind of like the X-Men Origins part of the title it's not not really all that necessary okay and that that's fair um how much of a spoiler warning do we need to put on here uh i guess we can tell people we're going to be talking about the first two episodes of agents of shield because that's what's come out so far we're going to talk about it give it a general you know yay or nay kind of a thing a a, a general review of this show but we will talk about moments and uh things in there so if you haven't seen agents of shield and you expect to do so soon you probably want to uh you know save this for later if you don't expect to be able to see it for a long time then well hey you'll probably forget what we said by the time it comes around but uh yeah there's there's i'm sure going to be spoilers it's just there's no way around it when you talk about media things okay properties so yes be warned and uh well first off i mean it seems like you didn't bury the lead you said you didn't have anything to that got your goat so am i to assume (laughs) that you enjoyed the show uh, yeah, I was thinking of the traditional that got gets my goat kind of thing where we get on and bitch about whatever annoying thing we uh, find. So I wasn't really talking about the show Shield. But yes, I have enjoyed the show. It's been really fun because I see a lot of Firefly in this show. Um, I don't. I guess a lot of Avengers in this show too. I guess Joss Whedon is just one of his really big strong points is being able to take a group of characters and put them together into a show and make them do things and make you start to really enjoy them all and love them all and, and so forth, which. Other people sometimes I think struggle with that kind of a thing, being able to get a group to uh all have you know something to do uh we talked about that back when we were talking about when avengers first came out you know how well he did to give the pit the you know the little members of the of the team uh things to do and and worthwhile uh moments and elements and so forth and i think yeah he's doing a, another of the same thing with this uh this show it's really interesting. I've I've had a good time with it so far. I ran out of before the yawn burst in. I'll make everybody tired by yawning while I speak, so I'll try not to do that again. Uh, but what did you think of it? You've seen both episodes, right? I have, and I, I think this is the second show we've done this with. The, the second Joss Whedon show to air since we started podcasting. And with Dollhouse, which was the last one, I so wanted to like it because it was the very first uh, Joss Whedon show I had gotten into from the ground up as it was new as a fan of Joss Whedon. But it had problems and it had a premise that was frankly limited. It had certain strengths, but as as a long-term series, it just wasn't going to work. 
Do you know what I mean? Uh huh. Whereas this, this has the makings for something that could go on for years and years and years uh, until like in the eighth or ninth season when nobody that we know on the show today is on it anymore. It's kind of like the X-Files. It's kind of like Firefly. It's kind of like Mission Impossible. It just happens to be in the Marvel Universe. And I, I, I think that they've got a, a, a handful of really interesting characters that for one reason or another, don't always get along. And as the show continues, we'll get to like these characters and get to know these characters. So yeah, right from the get-go, I felt like, wow, oh, this show has potential to be great. Uh, And yes, I have been enjoying it. Well, that's good. Yeah, it does seem like it's... I don't know, you know, Joss Whedon has like a, a... I can't think of the right word for it, but like a certain style or a certain... There's always that little something. Um, a lot of times it's the dialogue that's really snappy or there's the the little thing that the that they go back to. And there's a lot of that with this show. I don't know if that's explaining that very well. It themes or just a feel to his show or an attitude? Or are you saying uh, – define his style. <laughs> that's hard. I, I definitely – I think it's a feel – to uh his stuff it's hard to define his style but i would say definitely the dialogue being something that's probably worked on a lot more than perhaps another show so it's it's not like everybody has funny things to say or interesting things to say per se but uh sometimes you get the good back and forth the the characters are really well defined you can tell you know who's speaking if you read the script with no names over the lines, you could probably still tell, oh, this is this person, this is that person. And yeah, there's always those little moments that you get in a in a Joss Whedon f- film I'm try- or a Joss Whedon show. I'm trying to think of a good one. I just finished watching episode two, so it should be fresh in my mind. But yeah, just little things like the time where he, he's showing, uh, Coulson is showing Sky around the plane. And she opens up her drink and he says, oh, use a coaster. And he pulls the coaster out. And then at the end of the show, after they've like blown a hole in the ship um, and everything's kind of in shambles, he has the broken bottle and he sets it down and then she picks it up and puts the uh, the little coaster underneath it. You know, the callback to the earlier moment or whatever. You get a lot of that kind of really well-crafted uh, script writing in a uh, a show that's helmed by Joss Whedon. Uh, what would you say his style is? Oh boy, it is hard to define, isn't it? He has a voice that's recognizable. Uh, as, as maybe it's an attitude, but in yeah, in this show, I guess maybe it is a little bit more smart assy than other shows. <laughs> Like every character has some quick response that's just tossed out there and they don't pause for a laugh. It's just said and then it's on to the next line and on to the next line. And yet when somebody is called on to be serious or to suffer or, you know, to threaten somebody else, you you don't feel like that's a laugh either too. You know, the, he knows when to be serious with Malcolm Reynolds on Firefly. He could be just a hilarious character, but when you pissed him off, he was scarier than the other guys on the crew. Even Jane, who killed people left and right, even Gina Torres's character, who was like six foot five. <laughs> what was her name? Zoe. Thanks. I don't know. I, I yeah. I, I shouldn't have asked you that question when I couldn't answer it myself. <laughs> it's all right. I guess that's kind of what we're here is to flail about and try and and talk about that kind of stuff anyhow we've been fans of joss whedon for years and years and i I became a fan through firefly but then i went back and i saw his other shows and and uh, this is the first one though that was just right out of the gate going to be a hit the network believed in it which is a big deal for joss whedon (laughs) <laughs> yeah i believe the pilot that aired was actually the pilot he shot what 
at ABC put a tremendous amount of money behind the show and advertising and uh, basically gave him a lot of control and have organized their whole Tuesday night based around this show. And so I, I, it'll for sure go a full season. And I, I would think that that's got to take the pressure off Joss. But at the same time, when you know that the network has put a lot of money into it and they're expecting it to be a hit, maybe there's still pressure there. Yeah, it's. I suppose it's a different kind of pressure. Instead of, you know, just hoping to, to stay alive, he's expected to deliver basically an Avengers. You know, he's got to de- deliver that for a TV station now or for a TV network now. And, yeah, it's... <laughs> You know, it's not like he has a blueprint that he can just, you know, sit down in the in the factory and in each one of the shows he does comes out and, oh, yes, manufacture hit after hit. You know, it's not like he's the, the guy from the more cowbell sketch where, you know, he puts his pants on the same way as everybody else, except for once he gets them on, he makes gold records. That Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> so... You know, I, I guess that's got to be some kind of pressure, some some pretty intense pressure. Because, yeah, if it doesn't do well, if it falls flat, I don't know. I don't know how much that will fall onto him or not. I mean, obviously, he's still got the movies. And how much involvement is he having in this exactly? I mean, he did direct uh, the pilot, right? He did, and, and he is... He's one of the creators. He was one of the writers of the pilot. He was the director of the pilot. And then he's an executive producer for the rest of the series. And I assume that that means that every script goes, you know, through him. He takes the pen out and Joss Whedon's it up. Um, But technically, he's not the showrunner uh, of the show. Otherwise, come January, we would have no more new episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The showrunners are... Uh, him and his brother Jed and his sister-in-law Jed's wife Marissa Tan Tancheron how uh, the girl who uh, the little girl in the chorus <laughs> on uh, <laughs> on Dr. Horrible uh-huh she does the weird stuff is she the one that does the weird stuff i think any one of the chorus would do the weird stuff actually so uh, see, it would be nice to get that creepy-looking male member of the chorus on an episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, and then I think I think you got Je- uh, Jeffrey Bell as a- another showrunner. So there's a lot of people to run the show. Uh, but once Avengers 2 starts shooting, I-, I-, I can't imagine Joss will have any time to devote to it at all. Yeah, so hopefully uh, the folks that are in charge of it will be able to uh, continue with it. I mean, Joss has in the past had a lot of irons in the fire and been able to keep going because Buffy, Angel, and Firefly were all going at once, weren't they? They were. And yeah, during that sixth season of Buffy, uh, Marty Noxon ran the show. And you know, a lot of people said that the quality went way, way down. Because Joss had this sci-fi show that he really wanted to do. And, uh, I, well, the man can't do everything. But hopefully he's done as much as he can to get the ball rolling. And uh, I'm sure the second Avengers 2 is done, he'll step right in again. But I, mean, but I think that's what a pilot is for. Is you put your team together. You make an episode that's a template for all the episodes that come later. And say... Okay, we did this. Now see what you can do with it and see what you can do with it. And I mean, most of the time, the guys who do the pilots do step back. And a lot of times they never come back. They just get a check every every week. But I mean, Joss isn't just in charge of Avengers 2, though. I mean, he is a member of the Marvel Studios board now. He's part of the brain trust. He is. Yeah. And uh, I, I know that they brought him in for uh, Thor too, to solve some problems on that. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Captain America too had some, some Joss Whedon influence. But I don't know. The see the other guys, 
uh, Jed and Marissa and Jeffrey Bell, I don't know them as their own people. You know what I mean? I'm sure they're very talented, but they don't have a voice of their own for me. And probably until you see a show that's just done by Jed Whedon, you know, he'll continually be Joss's little brother. And one of the cowboys in the uh, Bad Horse Chorus. <laughs> well, you know, really? Well, did you do your homework on this or do you just remember? <laughs> I just remember. I, I, think I, I think I learned all this stuff from uh, the director's commentary, the non-singing director's commentary that they had for that show. I think I saw Jeff Loeb's uh, name in the credits too. Is he something important for this? Uh, Jeff Loeb is the head of Marvel Television. Uh, that's the company that was set up like Marvel Films, uh, like, sorry, Marvel Studios, but just for TV. And so he heads the cartoons, you know, like Ultimate Spider-Man and, and the Avengers one and the Hulk one. And then, yeah, he's, I don't know how involved he is in this show. I mean, he he's also an executive producer, so maybe he's also a showrunner. I don't know. Hmm. He's got a lot of TV experience, also. Yeah, uh, and, he was. He was one. Wasn't he one of the main dudes for that Heroes show? Yeah, yeah, he was the one that was the uh, the guy in charge of the Hayden Panettiere subplots. Oh yeah, uh, and yeah, Jeff Loeb is a big comic book guy too. I've written a lot of comics. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've talked about Jeff Loeb. We used to bring him up fairly often back in the day. Yeah, you know, I don't really know. I mean, I, this this probably should be deleted, but his boy died, and he quit working on Smallville when that happened. He took some time off, and uh, he, uh, as far as I know, he he still writes comics, but it took a lot of wind out of his sails. And maybe maybe once you step out of the game, it's really hard to get back in. I don't know, but he's doing all right. I mean, if he's head of Marvel Television. Um, yeah. Then, yeah, he's he's not on the corner with a sign. Yeah, he's obviously been doing stuff. We just haven't paid enough attention to it to know or to bring it up. Maybe he was doing the uh, Green Arrow TV show. <laughs> so anyhow, the first episode was about a, a man. Uh, J. August Richards played him, and he was gun on the Angel series. Uh, he has this... Uh, device attached to his arm that gives him incredible strength and uh, and and abilities but he also uh, seems to be losing his mind because of it i mean they set him up as a hero in the very in the teaser but as the show goes along he becomes less and less stable in more ways than one whereas i assumed he was going to be like a an ally maybe even a new member of the team he becomes the villain of the episode and we meet uh, Agent Coulson again, and he's put together this team of, how many are there, would you say? Six? Five? There is one, two, three, four. Counting Coulson, there's five to begin with. Okay. Then Sky later becomes part of it, so she's sixth, I believe. And uh, I don't know why I'm summing it up, but it's just an easy way to start talking about the characters and the episodes. But uh, this team is made up of Agent Ward, right? Is that his name? Yeah, I think uh, so. Who's the big square-jawed dude. And he's he's super tough and he's good at fighting and he speaks a bunch of languages. And he's a James Bond type of guy. And they take him away from all that and put him on this team where it's obvious he's not a team player. Yeah. And then also he brings uh, – oh, shoot. What was her name? Help me out. It's a it's a Stan Lee kind of name. Marissa May, I want to say it is. Uh, Melinda May, I think. Maybe Melinda May, something May. Okay, so uh and she's played by Mulan and she <laughs> and she apparently was just like the greatest kick-ass agent ever until something happened and now she does paperwork and Coulson is able to convince her to come join the team and she seems to be some kind of martial arts expert escape expert combat strategist but but for all intents and purposes she's hired to be their pilot their driver 
right? Hey, yeah, everybody needs a bosom for a pillow. Wait, I mean, uh, everybody needs a driver, Wait, right? No, no, I want to hear more about bosoms. <laughs> um, and then uh, there, there's a duo who are sort of the techie uh, scientist members of the team. And I can't tell the difference. Uh, one of them's named Fitz and one of them's named Simmons. And they refer to them as Fitz Simmons. Yeah, I believe the boy, the, the male half of this duo is Fitz. And the female half is Simmons. And yeah, these are two... Are they Scottish? I think the Fitz has got a Scottish accent. I don't know. Simmons, I'm afraid I'm, to uh, to say because, to me, Australians sound we'll say uh, British. British. So. <laughs> we'll just say British and... and just in case we're off, maybe they're Geordies or I don't, I, you know, I don't, I'm not very good with picking out the actual location of the accent since I've never been to the British Isles to uh, learn these things and figure it out. But yeah, you've got those two and they're, they're techie. I, I, I believe one that I think Simmons is supposed to be like the bio engineer kind of person, whereas Fitz is supposed to be more the mechanized engineer kind of guy yeah he he runs all their tech and he has these little uh drones that uh are named after the seven dwarves <clears throat> so that's all the team and then he they bring on board this uh hacker computer hacker named sky and and if you've not seen the show basically somebody cloned eliza dushku and made a younger version of her and uh she does all the things that Dushku used to be able to do. It's amazing. I, technology has gotten to a point where it's just astounding. Yeah. They have drones named after the Seven Dwarves, after all, so they can do anything. That's right. And anyhow, she uh, <laughs> <laughs> she seems to be somebody who uh, is is big on revealing all the secrets that people don't want revealed. And she was a computer hacker and part of a network of, uh, gosh, you'd almost want to call them like... Uh, computer terrorists kind of things who get into your files and sp spill the beans to everybody and 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 they they can't be tracked and and all that yeah they're kind of a WikiLeaks and uh anonymous kind of a group is what we're talking about with this group and they're called the rising tide yeah good job man and uh, anyhow she reluctantly joins them and uh, that's the team so they're brought together in that first episode, and uh, then in the second episode, they find – or someone finds a an artifact, a mysterious artifact, and they go on their first mission to retrieve it, and uh, things don't, don't, don't work out as easily as, as they expected it to. Maybe I should just let you talk for a minute. The, no, sorry. I'm not going to let you talk. Let's, I, I should have said this at the very, very beginning. Colson. Agent Coulson, we, you and I both like Agent Coulson a lot. He was made up for the Marvel Studios films. He died a noble death, a really emotional scene in Avengers. Uh, and now he's starring in his own show. How do you feel they handled that? Well, when it comes down to it, they haven't really handled it. But they have tantalized you with the fact that maybe someday they'll handle it. It's one of those kind of things like all the characters have a a, a, a little something like that. Like Coulson, you keep getting little things, you know. Somebody says, he, you're having a midlife crisis. And he's like, eh, it's more of like an afterlife crisis. And he, uh, that's, that, this is one of those things that I, I, I should have been able to come up with it when I was saying there's always the little thing. They keep talking about Tahiti. And every time they talk about Tahiti, Coulson always says, it's a magical place. <laughs> every single time Tahiti is mentioned, it's a magical place. They say he was in Tahiti for a while and now he's better. But there, at the very start, Shepard Book tells you that, what? He, doesn't, he really doesn't know? And he can never know. Yeah, there's some, something has happened. Something is going on with Coulson. Something weird, and obviously, eventually, you know, we're going to find out. And maybe it's one of those things where we'll find out a little bit at a time. It'll be like the on Castle, they have the episode, like at the end of every season, where it's about Beckett's mom's murder. Every now and then, something will come back up, 
and Beckett's mom murder comes back I, and maybe it'll be like that where you get a little bit and it's one of those things where oh now we've got this little bit and then six months later there'll be another episode and we get a little bit more and we'll start having to get those previously on agents of shield and then they'll show us the little things to remind us oh okay this all goes to this show. okay thanks but yeah i think it'll be uh probably one of those kind of things where they just and the other characters have it too. Um, Melinda May or Marissa May or uh, Mahatma May, whatever her name was. What was it that made her want to not be in the field? What was it that made her not want to be in action? They keep bringing that up too. Colson says, oh, sorry, I know you didn't want to see combat. And then, yeah, they just move on. So I think eventually we're probably going to find out about that too. You know, it's it's one of those things that's, it's just out there. But I I think that they handled it well in doing that. You know, that it's something. There's something there. But we don't know what it is that's happened. Uh, something weird, obviously, because we know he was dead. And he doesn't shy away from it. He seems to know he was dead. Right. But he just thinks it was for eight seconds or 40 seconds, depending on who he's telling it to. The, see, that was the thing that I was really... Uh, hesitant to embrace when they said Coulson was coming back I was hoping oh well he's only in the pilot and he's going to um, he's going to bring this group together and then he's going to get killed by Loki and that's fine but when I found out oh no no it's after Avengers and he's somehow alive again it was just that comic book death thing that cheapened the whole idea of death that cheapened his sacrifice that cheapened the Avengers coming together as a team and I was so afraid that they were going to gloss it over and say, well, exactly what they said, that he never died, that Nick Fury faked it to get the Avengers to come together. But then they dropped that line that that's what he thinks happened to him. And somehow it made it all right <laughs> for me, at least. I mean, maybe there are still people out there that, that are upset about it, but the fact that they came right out in the very first scene he's in and told you, yeah, it's as bad as Rish Outfield feared. And then they said, or is it? It's just a, a wonderful thing that you can do when you've got a huge canvas to paint on. And a TV series is, is just a wonderful canvas where you don't even know how big it is. Yeah. And like you said, yes, these characters all have backstories and interesting things about them. And, uh, you know, I want to know what the deal is with Fitz and Simmons. But, you know, the deal, I made quotes in the air. And with Sky, she erased her whole existence. And Sky is not her real name. And is she with them? Or is she a mole in their organization? You know, these are things that well, they can dedicate whole episodes to. And that's another great, great thing about television is that we can get an episode that's all about fits. And it could be the best episode of the whole season. <laughs> and you, you can't have a movie about fits. You could have an indie movie about fits. Yeah, but I don't think we would ever see it or even know it exists. That's probably true. <laughs> one, one other neat thing that we knew was going to happen but it's still cool to see is we're we're getting cameos from the marvel cinematic universe in each episode uh in the first episode you got maria hill uh, right there at the beginning looking so much better than they ever allowed her to look in avengers and then uh in the second episode which was called 084 i, I had forgotten but that's their code huh the last time it was a hammer <laughs> I, you get somebody at the very end of that did you know that was coming well you mentioned that <sighs> somebody was going to that they did like a post credits kind of a thing i didn't know who it was i just knew that there was something that was coming and it was fun to see the fact that they have these movies that are established and a relationship with the people that are in the movies gives us the possibility to see pretty much anybody sometime along the series and that's a, a really neat, I'm going to say it, gimmick for the show. But I don't know that that's going to make the difference between good and bad television. No, I think it'll be more just of a fun thing. I mean, when it comes down to it, I was probably just as excited to see Shepard Book on there as I was to see the uh, unmentioned <laughs> person at the end of episode two. 
I guess it just depends on, uh, you know, your background and what, what you think is what, what you love about Joss Whedon or, or whatever the deal is. I don't know, but, uh, I wonder if we'll see book again and again as time goes by, or if that was his one show. It's weird that he was a, I, I, I thought he was going to be a more of a character and then, yeah, I haven't seen him since that one scene. Well, nobody's gotten very badly hurt. Maybe when somebody does, he'll be the guy that attends to them. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. The, the weakness, in my opinion, of doing a Marvel Studios affiliated show is that it's always going to be hooked to that train. That every episode you're going to have to remind people of the movies like these first two movies, uh, first two episodes have. Whereas I, what I'm hoping is that they develop these five characters and bring in new characters and we start to become more and more excited about them than the possibility that Pepper Potts might be in an episode. And the, also the fact that it's in the Marvel Universe means that every single time, you know, they're coming up against a bad guy, a little voice in my head is going to say, oh, is that guy from the comics? And I'm not sure that that's a good thing either. Yeah, th that's interesting. I, the, the cool thing is that they can get things from the comics all the time, but they probably won't do a lot of it, I would guess, because these aren't super, none of them are superheroes. They're all just agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, in the comics, agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., except for the ones that are like the tip-top ones, are, you know, they're just guys in outfits that you, you don't know. You know, you know, they're red shirts, basically. <laughs> it's what agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are. So this is kind of a, a show about the red shirts. The red shirts take the center stage somehow. So I would guess that they would probably have to keep the threat level somewhat low. Uh, because of that, you can't have them taking on too many uh, super-powered people anyways. Oh, and yeah, that's fine, too. It doesn't have to be them saving the world every single episode. If they can find personal things like they did in the second episode. I mean, I, I think if we see the ridiculously hot Latin chick with the boobs again in the show, I will be just as excited as if we saw War Machine or something, you know? Well... That's just because you like ridiculously hot women with boobs. I know. I, I'm tr I, I'm trying to get over that because you know I know that's not something that you share. I, I see <laughs> the the ending of that second episode. They blow a hole in the plane, and instead of you know kicking them in the face, Coulson grabs the girl. He grabs them and tries to save these people. And for some reason that struck me as really old-fashioned. I was just not used to seeing that. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I don't know. It's just not really done anymore. And maybe I'm just thinking of action movies where you gotta kill the bad guy. Even if this is the first movie in a franchise and you're hoping to have five or six more, you still gotta kill him at the end. The fact that, you know, that the villain didn't pay for their crimes with their life... <sighs> Anyway, it just it, it was it's it's the way that television and comic books work because they know there are more stories to tell. Yeah, that's definitely the case. Uh, this is a, a TV show. It's like uh, it makes me think of that that character from Firefly. What was his name? Ziska or R yeah. Niska? Niska, the the one that said you died, Mister Reynolds. <laughs> Yeah, the the really creepy guy with the Eastern European accent that was like into torture and stuff. That guy kept coming back, and uh, I loved it when he did. It was so cool. And then Firefly only had what, like thirteen episodes? Yeah, it was between twelve and fourteen. I, I don't know. And they brought him back at least once, just in that span. So you know, there's there's a lot you can do. We can have. Camila, was her name Camila? Camila Reyes or something like that? Yeah, I think that was it. Camila Reyes, Comandante. That's right. Um, they, they can probably bring her back. Again, you know, at the end of the show, he says, oh, yeah, the Peruvians will probably negotiate for her release and she probably won't spend any time in jail kind of a thing. So, you know, I think that pretty obviously tells us we, we can see her as soon as next episode. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with that. Don't burn your bridges, folks. 
Yeah, and she's a ridiculously hot chick with boobs, so... Why do you say I'm not Sigmund Freud? (laughs) Okay. The potential on the show for me is is really, really great. And I hope that they're not just tied to these five or six cast members and that they do bring in new people and some of them go. And well, knowing a Joss Whedon show, they'll probably not all be around in season two. And and then also with uh, Thor 2 coming out, I really hope they take advantage of that and tie in to whatever's going on in Britain. And I don't know. It's just the the opportunity when they're concurrently making these movies for the same company with a lot of the same people involved. That's really exciting. Yeah, I wonder uh, how long it'll be before we start seeing cameos of people from the show in the films, too. Well, I wouldn't be surprised you know, if Captain America 2 doesn't have somebody because it's really shield centric. Right. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see uh how many people they can create in this show. I wouldn't be surprised too if we start getting some kind of Agents of Shield comic book if we haven't already. I don't know. I don't keep uh up with that kind of stuff, but you know, I bet that there is a uh a tie-in kind of comic book that you'll get in comic book stores soon, if not already. Is there one already? I would think it's too soon, but you never know. There are S.H.I.E.L.D. comics anyway, or, you know, Nick Fury comics or that sort of thing. Uh-huh. But yeah, the, I, I, I can guarantee you that these characters will start showing up in the comics, just like Agent Coulson started showing up in the comics. And maybe they'll start showing up in Ultimate Spider-Man, too. <laughs> oh, now, see, that would be interesting. Agent Ward will be the vice principal. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Agent Ward is kind of the, the the bad A, and that's the way the vice principal is supposed to be. You know, he's supposed to be the, the, the one that punishes the kids, whereas the principal is like their friend, you know. So it's the good cop, bad cop kind of thing. I, I Yeah, I have no idea if... Ultimate Spider-Man and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. take place in the same universe, but it would be very amusing to see that little team in animated form. Yeah. (laughs) Now, uh, one other thing before we let people go. Your wife watched the show with you. Uh, Did you get any impression that she enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it? Um, I think she enjoyed it. It was weird when we watched that show. We got it. We... ran it through my laptop i watched it off of abc.com and i ran it through the laptop and i used a uh, hdmi cable and plugged it into our big tv and we watched it that way whereas the second episode i just watched right here sitting in front of my uh, imac that i have and interestingly i didn't run into any problems with it just on the imac but when we were running it through the laptop into the big TV, I got a lot of glitches with it where, you know, the the video would play and then it would freeze on a freeze frame. The audio would keep going, but the video would freeze frame on me and then it would start playing again and then it would freeze frame again. And I'm not sure if it's something wrong with the laptop because it's a really cheap laptop that we bought for the kids and it's one of those ones where it comes just loaded with stupid crap. All the stupid, you know, programs, and they want you to buy the program. So, like, they give it to you, and then, like, your subscription runs out in 15 days, and then you get endless pop ups saying, Your subscription is out. You need to sign up, or else your computer's going to blow up. So, I don't know if that stuff was causing us problems. But yeah, so there was that that was giving us issues as we were watching it. And then also, my wife just had, I don't know, a lot to talk about when the show started. She was talking and talking, and um, I I finally had to tell her to shush because I was missing all sorts of stuff. As I explained already, the, the feed from the computer wasn't coming through so well, so trying to rewind it slightly... I actually did that one time. I tried to rewind it slightly, and I wound up skipping forward somehow... I'm really screwing everything up, so I tried to not do that again. But uh, in the end, she said that she really enjoyed it and that she liked it. 
Um, at first, she was, I think, a little confused. She was talking over important parts. And then she'd be like, wait, why are they doing this? I don't understand what's going on here. What is this and what is that? But eventually, uh, it managed to clear itself up even to the person who talked over it a little. Yeah, I think she really enjoyed it uh, as well. I, I, I'd actually like to see it with a lot of my kids too because I think they would like it too. They uh, really enjoy comic book stuff. They watch a lot of comic book cartoons. But there haven't been... We've never watched uh, any of the comic book related TV shows with the kids. Is Smallville on Netflix? Yes. I ought to watch that with them. I bet that they would really enjoy that. I've never seen it either, too, so it would be something for me as well. But yeah, watching this with the kids might be really interesting, too. I think they would really enjoy it. It could be, I, I was saying this to you before, but it could be like when I was a kid where the whole family would get together and we'd even like pop popcorn and stuff and we'd all sit down and watch Dukes of Hazard together. <laughs> or we'd all sit down and watch uh, Knight Rider together or whatever, you know. It can be like a throwback to the 80s where we all watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. together. Okay, well, I I don't know that we have a ton more to say. Do you? Not really. I, uh, basically, I give it a thumbs up. Uh, I recommend it. Check it out if you you know live somewhere where it's available. I don't know if it's available everywhere in the world. I know we do have plenty of listeners that hail from places like New Zealand and Great Britain and well, other areas. It's on in England. It's on in Australia. I don't know about New Zealand. Uh, I The less I say about New Zealand, the better because... I always offend them. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the case with most places. But yeah, uh, if if you live somewhere where it's available, check it out because I I think it's it's worth you know the the time that you spend in front of the TV and it's a Joss Whedon show, so it should be good. That's one of those things you can expect it to be good. Even I mean, we talk about Dollhouse earlier and how it just kind of had problems from the get go. It just didn't have a lot of places that could go it still had some really great moments and some really enjoyable shows even though it kind of had a flawed premise and everything to begin with it still uh, provided some really enjoyable moments so now you got this one which has much more upside to it you can expect there to be a lot of uh, good times ahead well time will tell and uh, we have forums if people want to talk about it I don't know. Maybe you and I will get together six months from now and we'll talk about how the season one went, or maybe we'll never mention it again. I, I It's hard to say. But television has the potential to suck you in way deeper than movies do. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, if, if, if this show develops its own diehard fandom of people that don't really care about Thor and Captain America and Iron Man. Uh, yeah, that, that'll be really cool. It'll be interesting to see. Let's just hope that it keeps it up better than Heroes did. Heroes started out so well, and then the first season finale it fell on its face, and I was never able to really get back up from there. So uh, let's just hope that this version of a superhero-esque show treats us better. I hope to be able to talk about it for years to come. All right, well, there we go. Another episode done. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, oh, we had something to, to mention. This is our last regular episode of That Gets My Goat before we start into this year's 13 Nights of Halloween Marathon. <laughs> is that supposed to be a scary noise? I didn't make that noise. Uh. <laughs> so, so yeah, like last year, we did the 13 Nights of Halloween where we talked about various Halloween-related topics. And we also shared stories from our trunk or whatever you want to say. And this year, yeah, we're, we're planning to do basically the same thing. Um, we'll be uh, talking... Halloween, talking scary stuff, and uh, sharing scary-ish 
stories <laughs> with you. Um, so yeah, get ready because this same funny. Wait, what does that mean? It's just an, a, a line from a Beastie Boys song. Oh, My name is Mike D, and I'm about to get money. Did you hit it with a wiffle ball bat by any chance, sir? That's right, I did. I did it like this, and I did it like that. So yeah, coming up next next week. See, I don't I don't know how we can possibly ask people for donations after saying that, but <laughs> yes, that's hopefully somebody out there will feel inclined to donate to our show in support of the 13 nights of Halloween and the insane amount of work that is going to be. Yeah, that's right. We're doing it as a sort of donation drive. It's like the the pledge drives that the um, public television and public radio stations do where they, they beg for donations for like a whole week straight or whatever. So you start, stop listening to them and start listening to another station until they're finally done. Um we're not going to beg the entire time, but yeah, that's why we're doing this is is to t- try and uh, raise some donations so we can uh, get some things fixed up in Doonstie Fland. So yeah, it, we're doing it as you know when they when they do those uh, things on the public TV, they're always like, if you donate this much, you get this Big Bird uh, tote bag. It's this is the tote bag that you get for donating. <laughs> You the cool thing about it is you get it before you donate unless you donate right now and then we, you actually don't get it before you donate but you get it whether you donate or not but please donate That's right if you don't donate you don't get shit <laughs> you don't get the tote bag that's for sure screw you um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways so yeah that's coming up next uh next week or next time i guess it may be less than next week for all i know uh depending on how things go but yeah it's coming up very soon so look for that and enjoy yeah, it, it should be what the 19th of october something like that does that give 13 days it's the 19th or the 18th okay well i don't know seems like it should be the 18th because 18 plus 13 or 13 makes 31 but i always mess that up somehow you have to count the day that you start yeah anyways yeah coming up very soon (laughs) all right well i will see you then all right thanks for listening everybody good night that gets my goat is produced under creative commons attribution non-commercial no derivatives license which between you and me means nothing